Eric Rodebois. So I'm gonna do a five minute video all about the value and the importance of due diligence. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell a story and then kind of wrap up the story with my, my more, I think, evolved and mature thoughts. Just so you know, it is June 3rd, 2024. Today's the 11th anniversary of the firm. And so I even said to a guy today, hey, listen, if you had caught me 11 years ago, I might have told you something a little bit different, but based on my experience and perspective. So here's my experience and perspective. People need to do more due diligence. They need to do more taking their time, asking important questions, asking why they're getting such a good deal, and, and really taking the time, getting a lawyer, writing a contract. If you don't wanna write a con, or you don't wanna hire a lawyer to write a contract, go online and see if you can download one. Get something in writing, because here's what happened. Guy goes and he wants to buy a, uh, it's like a, kind of like a golf cart. And so he goes and he finds someone online and the guy seems to be in the business of selling secondhand golf carts and it seems to be a pretty good deal. And so they go and he doesn't ask any questions. He didn't say, hey, can you give me a proof of ownership? Can you give me a service record? Can you tell me who the previous owner was? Can you, how about, do we have a contract? Can you send me a written agreement? If you're really in the business of selling golf carts, how about you show me your standard contract? Maybe I can take a look at it. Maybe if I want, I can go talk to a lawyer. Now, here's the problem in this story. This wasn't a $700,000 golf cart or a $7 million golf cart or a $70,000 golf cart. It was a $7,000 golf cart. So if you come to a lawyer like me, minimum consultation fee is gonna be 500 bucks, right? I've been doing this a long time. My time is worth every penny. And so you think to yourself, oh, I don't really wanna turn this from a $7,000 transaction into a $7,500 transaction. And heaven forbid, I find a problem or I try to talk you out of it. Maybe you pay me $500 and I tell you it's a bad deal, which by the way, by, by the end of the story, you're gonna see that that would have been worth every penny. So here's what happens. The guy buys the golf cart, no help, no assistance, no contract, no due diligence, no questions. And a year later, he decides to sell it. So he goes kind of into a similar forum. He posts, hey, I'm selling a golf cart. Another random person comes along and buys it from him. That random person, after they buy it, finds out that the golf cart was stolen. They ran the serial number on the golf cart and the serial number had been reported stolen. And so it, the actual, the item gets seized by law enforcement. So the buyer comes along and says, hey man, I want my money back and actually sends a threatening letter. And so my guy does the right thing and says, yes, I agree that, that you deserve to have your money back. So here you go. So now I bought a golf cart. Now I don't even have the golf cart anymore because it's been seized by the police and I paid back all the money that I earned. So I'm very negative in this position, right? I bought it initially and now I don't even have it. So he goes and he goes and gets a lawyer and the lawyer sends what's called a civil theft demand letter to the bad guys. The bad guys being the ones he initially bought the golf cart from. Well, here's the problem with civil theft. Civil theft in Florida, it's a statute. And the beautiful thing is on the one hand, it lets you do triple damages. So if it costs me seven, I can demand 21 plus attorney's fees, which could be $100,000 if we litigate this long enough. And so the downside is you have to prove criminal intent. So he sends a demand letter, the bad guys tell him that they're not gonna cooperate. So he then hires the lawyer to sue, and this is the point I would've stopped. So he hires the lawyer to sue, they, they file the lawsuit, they do some depositions, and the, guys, the bad guys in the depositions say, we didn't know it was stolen, we bought it from somebody else. Now, I asked the guy and he goes, well, I can prove it. And I go, how can you prove it? He goes, because they paid such a low price and then they flipped it to me. They should've known it was stolen. I'm like, that's not proof that's a reasonable inference and maybe that's logic and that's a good thing you could explain, but that's not proof. And the best case scenario, you have a Perry Mason moment in the trial where you're like, and didn't you know? And then they're like, yeah, I must've known. And then you know you convince the judge or the jury, but the odds of that happening, and, and here's the most important point, to get me from here to there might be $20,000 in attorney's fees, right? Where our best case scenario is 21 and we've got to win and then we got to try to collect and we've got to try to tack on our attorney's fees. All of this is complicated and, and all of this is unlikely. So finally his lawyer comes to him and says, hey, I don't think you're gonna win on civil theft, meaning I don't think there's any other way for us to get attorney's fees, meaning you're already seven or eight in the hole plus the seven you lost when you bought the thing, it might be best just to cut our losses. And so going back to the beginning, if he had just spent $500 doing due diligence two years ago, could have kept him out of this entire story. Now he's down 14,000 and the end is not in sight and he might just have to chalk that up to bad experience. 
And then going back to what I know now, what I, what I didn't used to know, is at the decision point for filing the lawsuit, after the demand letter and everything else we tried, I probably would have told him to take his losses and walk away. And the mountain controversy is not enough. The odds of proving civil theft is pretty unlikely. And here we are. So guys, if you have questions about this, please just remember, do your due diligence, spend the $500 on the consultation to keep you out of trouble. And if you have any thoughts or comments, leave one below. Thanks.